Hello, welcome to the Ghost Channel. This will be our first PowerPoint production. And this PowerPoint production is going to be on residual hauntings. And we're going to define more what is residual energy. Let's first take a look at the definition of residual energy. Residual energy basically in the paranormal field means exactly that this type of haunting does not interact with the physical time. This type of energy will be basically on a loop, easy to pattern. What actually causes residual energy? Well, residual energy is believed not to be a disembodied soul, but actually energy itself that was exposed after a high traumatic stressful event. Doesn't necessarily mean that someone actually had to die. Even substance abuse can actually cause residual energy. Some parapsychologists actually believe that there's a doorway actually in the human itself that underneath different substances, this doorway becomes open and energy actually leaks out and attaches onto physical objects. Also with residual energy, it's not just going to be as easy as calling in a priest or doing a smudging to actually be able to fix the problem. With residual energy, it actually absorbs into things, such as objects, a house. But this energy must be a heavier type of energy compared to air and all that. The molecules have to be a more denser. And the reason for this, and this is my theory, is that even after a house has been bulldozed, the ground itself is actually still showing signs of residual haunting. The energy settles within the house. Even the slightest opening of the door and just walking in and out will cause some of this energy to start to move. People in residual energy hauntings have more of a chance of seeing a full, full body apparition. And the reason for this is, is just walking in on one of these residual loops that's happening on a regular basis. What's the difference between residual haunting and a non-residual? Well, poltergeists that can move things and interacts with the physical time now. So just for instance, if you had a, a, a Coke can that was on the table and you seen this move in front of you, it's not going to be residual energy because it's reacting with the physical things that's happening now. With residual energy, even if a house has put a new floorboard in and it was higher than the original plan one, you might only see apparitions from the chest up because it's still interacting in the time that that original floor was there. The more movement that happens in the house, farther the residual energy travels. So if someone moved in, in a couple weeks of being there, they started noticing things, and by the end of them actually leaving, the whole house is showing activity. It's because of the movement. As a paranormal investigator, if we wanted to create a response, try to move objects in the house like tables and make noise. These noises cause vibrations in that that will start to shift the residual energy around the house. We need to keep in mind that it's not just a quick fix for these people who live in these types of houses, but we can give them some advice on possibly not to move furniture around not to be as loud. I guess that's what we can offer. Um, res residual haunted places. The reason that it's sustained there for all them years, because like I said before, it leeches in and stores energy into objects. The more vibration that an object has that has this energy stored, it releases it. Objects themselves being brought into a house that not prior before 
had any reports of haunting can be become haunted because of an object. For instance, have you guys heard of the story of the haunted cane? By bringing one of these objects in, it can start to release residual energy to that area. I hope this information has been helpful to people who need to have a deeper look into the paranormal. I hope people are actually researching in these groups that are going out and investigating. Our goal is to actually be able to help people that's living in these areas to have some sort of comfort, but also a knowledge of what's actually happening. So I thank you for taking your time and actually be able to listen to this PowerPoint production. Please post it up on other walls and that. Share it with your friends and family. And also get out there and research. The more the pair normal field knows, the better that it's going to be. And I believe in 2012 that we're going to probably come across some new things that's absolutely going to amaze even the skeptics. So thanks for listening, and have a good one.